Okay, so MMIs are pretty much over for a lot of you, uh, and if they're not, they're gonna be done in at least a month's time. So, what happens next? Well, you get back to your normal way of things, and before you know it, A-levels are on the horizons. And if you're like any medical student or prospective medical student, exams are a pretty big thing for you. But in terms of A-levels, it's always difficult to get back into the swing of things when you've just spent about five months focusing primarily on a med school application that you've now sent off. And most prospective medical students don't actually think about how important their A-levels are. Whilst your application is very important, if you don't get the grades required to get into medical school, it's all been in vain. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about how I got back into my A-levels and how I revised and any tips as well. So. If that sounds like a good idea, stick to the end of the video. Hey, welcome back everyone. We've been doing a lot of MMI videos and I hope you've been enjoying them and I might do a few more if I feel like it, you know, um, but hopefully you are genuinely finding them somewhat helpful in your revision. But let's be honest, uh, MMIs are finishing this year. Usually, most of them finish around February, but some of them do continue into the next month. Um, but you will soon have done with all your MIs. Now, depending on when you watch this, because I have no idea how long it's going to take me to edit and put out, because realistically, I'm I'm very disorganized. So I'm expecting to put this out in like 2023. So if, if this is out in 2022, then I've, I'll have i take that as a win um, in terms of my editing skills and my organization speed. Not only have you missed out on five months, but you were also expected to get the best grades by most medical schools, like at least A slash A star which are pretty tough to get at A level. So let's talk about what I did first of all. So let me paint you a picture. There's me, you know, little old me in sixth form standing there having done my MMI and I was done in about, uh, say, December to January. So to be honest, I was done pretty early. There was still a significant amount of time that I'd missed out of A levels due to MMIs, which was a bit of a worrying situation. But I kind of set myself a system so I'd get back into the rhythm of things. Now, the good thing about MMI is finishing is that you usually have a few days off that, a gross period almost, to get back into the swing of things before you have your first mock exams. So the first thing I would say is really important to do is to give yourself two to three days to just sit down, don't do homework, don't do any sort of revision, sit down and just catch up. So that time should be for you to literally just go through your textbook, AQA, OCR, and Excel, whatever you did. I, I don't know when I don't, to be honest, care really. That sounds horrible. I care about your A-levels, I care. I care about you, I hope you guys do well. I, I mean that I don't care what board you do. Regardless, this applies to everything. Um, so take your textbooks, uh, go and basically read all the lessons and lectures that you've missed, you know, over the period of time that you've been focusing on your MIs because to be honest you probably have or even if you haven't missed anything per se you've definitely like skimmed lessons while the rest of your class have been going you know at proper speed through your A-levels so whether it's biology, chemistry or maths you'll know which subjects you've neglected as a result of your MMIs and BMAN etc so go through those sessions and just make sure by the end of the three days you're caught up so you're at the same level that you would be if you hadn't had the five months and I know that sounds like a daunting task you know I'm asking you to catch up five months worth of missed stuff in three days but it's not as bad as it sounds first of all you won't actually have missed a lot of stuff like you would have been doing your A-levels you just wouldn't have been doing extra revision this three days period isn't for extra revision. This is literally for any lessons you've missed, any sort of lectures that you didn't do, or any classes that you've not really paid attention in because you were doing other stuff. Literally just use that to catch up on that. No revision, you don't need to be above and beyond, you don't need to be, need to be ready to sit the A-levels a or the mocks or whatever. This is purely just so that when you get to your next lesson, you've caught up on everything. So you know what, what they're talking about when they say, in our last lesson we did this, right? So it shouldn't be too difficult in that sense. Some people you might need longer, that's fine. I'd say take a maximum of three days and just enjoy it. You know, it's chill. I'm not asking you to memorize anything, remember anything, you know, actually do any revision. Um, very chill, just read through your textbook, you know, use some resources, watch some videos on it, you know, have a very chilled sort of session. You know, you can, this is truly up to you. You can listen to music in the background, you know, do whatever you want. Just a nice, chill three days of just very low-key studying to just get you back up to speed with things um, because that also will relax you you need three days where you can just relax for a little bit and you know realize that you're done with your med school application and you can't do anything at this point to change what's gonna happen now I would say that's the first thing to do take that three month honeymoon sort of area to catch up with everything and also relax so you can think of it like an academic holiday it sounds really nerdy but it, it does help to have that period of time you will get your responses coming through now as well so 
some universities will be like that, they'll be rapid and, you know, they'll send offers very quickly. Some of them will take slightly longer. So in terms of getting responses back, when you get your responses, because you will do, I would say not to worry too much about them. Make sure you've logged all of your responses, what you got, what you didn't get, and, you know, just send them to your advisor. But don't spend too much time faffing about with, oh, when am I going to get hear back from this university? When am I going to hear back from this university? When am I going to hear back from this university? Yeah, that time that you're wasting can be spent on A-level revision, which in the long term is going to make you feel a lot more relaxed. So you will all get a response back. And also there is zero correlation between when they send offers out and when they send rejection. Because they don't do it like, they don't just send everyone, you know, a congratulations email in January and send everyone a sorry you didn't get in in February. That's, and March. That's not how it works. You know, that would be a horrible thing. And literally zero universities do that. So just focus. Don't worry about your responses. When you get them, you'll get them. That's all. And make sure you tell your advisors about them when you get them back. It's the number one thing you should always do regardless of what the response is, regardless of how many grades you need, tell your advisors, they need to know pretty much all the steps, so do tell them. Okay, so the next thing is revising. So, revising forms to several schools of thought. I would say split this up into past papers and not past papers. So, a large number of people will go down the route of just doing past papers from, you know, day one. And that's kind of where I fall into. I, I kind of, it, it sort of depends on the way you revise. Some people, like me, will really enjoy doing past papers because that's the best way we feel like we thrive on but for other people you know they just don't thrive on doing past papers they need to read their textbook they need to make notes mind maps and all those kinds of things and if you're that kind of person do that don't just do past papers because it won't work for you but if you are interested in doing the past paper route i can tell you like what it entails so for me i would take a past paper and i would just do it the only time I would ever save a past paper or not do it on purpose and leave it to the end is if I'm doing a new specification and there's only like one paper available for it, then I would leave it till the end. But again, I wouldn't leave it till like the day before the exam, I'd leave it some time because in case I get something wrong, I need time to revise for it. But still, I would, apart from that, I would just do everything that's available to me. Some people say that you should leave exam papers till the end because you want to have as much material as you can. True, but realistically, there are so many resources out there that you're never going to run out of past papers to do. Um, so I would say if you do that you you risk actually not doing enough past papers so i would say just get started the luxury with public exams before you get to university is you have so many past papers specification papers online resources that you don't have at university so really use this uh, and just do loads if you enjoy doing past papers if you don't don't do this because it won't work for you do you know mind maps note taking whatever works for you I, I have no idea do that you know essentially if it worked for your GCSE it probably will work for your A level and there's a caveat there that we're going to talk about right now so the only caveat that exists here is that there's a slight difference with well, GCSEs you'll notice that essentially you can memorize a mark scheme and get away with it in A levels you can't they are much more applied questions so you need to understand the basics thoroughly so when you're practicing for these things Yes, use the mark scheme to see what you got right, but do not memorize the mark scheme. Understand the question, go and do some research around that question and see why the mark scheme says what it says. Ask your teacher about these things to see why the answer is what it is. So it's important in A-levels to understand why the answer is what it is, as opposed to in GCSE, just understanding what the answer is and memorizing and just putting it wherever it needs to be put. It's more about the why in the A-level that you need to understand the reasoning about it. They're not going to give you an exhaustive list of answers in A-level mark schemes. It's not going to run like that. They give you marks based on how good your answer is, based on the clinically applied situation. I say clinically because I'm saying that because I'm a medical student, but obviously in biology it's not all medicine, it could be to do with anything. There could be some chemistry in there, there could be some botany in there, literally anything. So however they apply the question is important. So I'd say that's the other important sort of technique that you need to understand when you're revising for A-levels. Okay, and I guess that's everything. So those are three things that we talked about today. So as a sort of rundown, we spoke about the grace period you should have after your MMIs. We spoke about sort of how to revise in general and then we spoke about the caveat between GCSEs and A-levels and that's everything I'm going to talk about I'm not going to drag this out for too long I hope you enjoyed the video uh, you can comment down below if you'd like anything else from me about A-levels or, or anything else you know at all I've been doing a lot of MMI videos so anything else maybe or if you want more MMI videos let me know I, I'm happy to do so uh, also you can contact me on my email which is in my channel somewhere or my Instagram which will be sort of put down here you can contact me through there where as many people have and I'm happy to reply to them uh, and yeah, can't think of anything else to say. Uh, go and check the links down below if you want to help support the channel. Um, there's several stuff down there which you can go and help out with if you feel like it. If not, no worries. I'll catch you all in the next video.